Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this crossover tutorial, I want to show you how you can convert a, an open mesh uh, into a series of blocks, as you can see here. Let me just open and close them. So actually, we're going to convert the mesh into some solids like this. And after producing the solids, we want to put them on the ground, unroll it, and uh, add these flaps. As you can see here, I can increase the distance, the scale. I'm going to explain this. Uh, step by step and also the distance for the uh, parts. Uh, we're also going to use the openness plugin to put them on the ground. I'm also going to explain how you can uh, planarize a mesh. So this is our base mesh, but what we want to do is to, uh, as you can see here, these parts are not flat. So what we're going to do is to make them into flat parts and then uh, unroll them on the ground. Uh, okay, let me explain this step by step. Yeah, and what we want to do is to turn off the algorithm and this is uh, our base mesh uh, as you can see here uh, I've made this in Rhino and then just internalize the mesh inside Grasshopper so this mesh is open at the bottom and I have made this completely flat and the reason I've done, uh, done this is because I want those parts to be uh, completely on the ground. Uh, so that is how this example file will work. Okay, uh, after in, uh, internalizing the mesh inside Grasshopper, uh, I have used the Kangaroo plugin and the solver. So here we have the solver. Uh, we have to use the show component and add it uh, to the mesh and give it to the goal object because we want the mesh as an output. Uh, we also can use the goals mesh a uh, planarize which is going to uh, make that mesh planar and I've given the strength of 1000. So I'm actually saying that the planarize is really important. Uh, the next goal is to extract the naked vertices. You can use the mesh uh, naked vertices here and if I connect a naked point here, uh, you can see that those are the points on the ground and I can give them to the kangaroo goals point anchor and that means these naked points are not going to move, especially that my mesh is completely on an X, uh, XY plane. So if it's not, be sure to uh, change this algorithm based on what you want. So I don't want this planarize to move this uh, anchors. If you want to understand what's happening here, let me explain this. Uh, uh, for the reset, we just have a button that's going to reset. And for the output, you just have to uh, flatten the output. So you can see the goal show object, which we used here. Let me explain it here. Uh, the show is going to come to the first output and the other uh, inputs we given to the goal object is going to go to the next output. So what we have to do is to flatten it and just pick up uh, the list uh, item index zero, which is going to be the uh, planarized mesh. Uh, let me turn off the main mesh so you can see that this is the planarized. If I reset it, this is the main mesh. This is the planarized mesh. And when we want to check out if this is planar or not, for meshes, what I usually do is to go to the mesh, use a face border, face boundaries, and then go to the curve, analyzes planar, which is going to give you a test. And just connect a panel to the uh, P, planarity of the curve, and you can see it's completely planar. So if I just go back, you can see it's not planar, and after that it's completely planar. So uh, after uh, producing the mesh, if I don't give this anchor as the goals, let's go to the front view. And this is the base mesh. So when I planarize, you can see that these points are going up, these vertices. So that is really important to add the anchor to your project. I'm going to use the shift key to here. Uh, so we always put them on the ground. Let's just go to the perspective and turn this off just for those who want to know. So before we start this tutorial, let me show you the lessons we have added to Paracourse this week. Uh, one is that you can convert a mesh uh, into a series of faces connecting with the neighbors uh, as a pipe. And then we're going to talk about extension and connection and making a, a parametric connection with that. So you can see that these are the connection we're going to talk about in this lesson. We're also going to talk about a point attractor, which is going to help you to design a parametric building something like this with a point attractor and an intersection with a plane. Uh, so I'm going to explain that step by step. 
uh, in this power course lesson. We have also talked about a Boolean pattern, which we can produce uh, patterns on a mesh faces uh, with uh, toggles. And I'm going to explain that also step by step. Okay, uh, after we have produced the mesh, uh, what I want to do is to uh, bring those parts, the building blocks at the bottom. Uh, you, you can use the bounding box to find the bounding box. Uh, deconstruct it into the faces of the bounding box, obviously. Uh, then what I want to do is to find the area or centroid. And the reason I've done this is because uh, I want to find the bottom. So for some of the projects, this uh, face is not uh, uh, fixed. So maybe it's like zero, sometimes it's going to be five. So what I have done here is just sorting and finding the bottom. Uh, you find the area, then you deconstruct the centroids. You can see that we have the Z. Uh, then when we sort the Z from smallest to biggest, we're going to also sort uh, the centroids. So uh, after sorting the Z, you can see this is like 10, which is obviously going to be this point Z, and just sort it till the highest. And after that, we have also the sorted points here. That is why we pick the list item zero, which is always going to give us the uh, bottom point for here. Okay, after finding the uh, point which you want to extrude those parts, uh, for the meshes we give this face boundaries again, uh, which is obviously going to give you, if I bake that, the boundaries. And then we're going to extrude them, extrude point, uh, from the surface, we just uh, convert them into surfaces by giving it a surface. And we extrude them to this point. So you can see it here. And if I just turn off and bake this extrude point, you can see that we have these parts. Just extrude them to the center because we want it uh, after fabrication, you can just put that on the ground, right? So it's completely flat. So just change that based on your project. And uh, there's also a multiplication here uh, to open and close your mesh, something like this. It's really easy. What you have to do is to uh, find uh, the evaluate surface of those face boundaries. Actually, when you give the face boundaries to this evaluate surface, it's something like giving the surface. So just we have these base surfaces, we evaluate the surface. Uh, at the center and it's going to give us the normal direction. So what you have to do is just to move them in the normal direction with a multiplication. So this part of the algorithm is just moving them in the normal direction and for visualization purposes. Okay, I'm just get rid of this part. And uh, if you want to also see the number of these parts, uh, what I have done here is, let's just turn off the mesh. Uh, I've, uh, for the mesh, use the face normals. Mesh face normals is going to give you the uh, normals. It's something similar to this one. Uh, and then you can give it a, a display point list. If I bake that, you can see the number of the objects in the grasshopper uh, memory. So this is like the first one, this is the second one till the end. Okay, just for visualization purposes, we can uh, turn that on or bake it and just move that around if you want to see it like this. Uh, after producing these parts, uh, you can use the Rhino Nest plugin, uh, Open Nest plugin, and uh, we're going to use two tools. One is going to be the uh, Unroll tool, which is going to unroll those uh, poly surfaces, and also uh, pack objects to put them on the ground. You can use other tools if you want to, but uh, remember this uh, Planarizing thing is really important because if our mesh is not planarized, obviously these faces are not planar, uh, how can it be uh, unrolled on the ground? So we did this planarized thing to solve that issue. <clears throat> okay, after uh, having the B-Rep, you can use the unroll. You can give it a mesh or a B-Rep to the mesh input and it's going to give you the unroll to B-Rep if I preview it here or bake it. You can see that we have them on the ground. And those are the parts. You can see that that's the flat quad here and these are the triangles. Uh, we have to flatten and give it to the pack object component. 
pack objects. This is the geometry we want to pack because we unrolled it. Uh, another thing we want to do is to give it a plane. So just a trick, you can use the area centroid to find their centroid for all of these B-reps. So volume centroid and give it to the plane. We want to put them on the ground from this. And then you just give this a distance. And then you can see here, it's really great. You can, and they are on the ground. Uh, the last uh, project, the last part we want to do here, let me just bring this back, is the part that we want to add the flaps. Uh, I've used uh, and checked different techniques. I want to give you the fastest one. So what we want to do here is to, uh, okay, let me explain it on the screen. So what we have here is a B rep, for example, like this. And what we want to do is to just add something like this to the edges, right? Uh, a technique you can use is that each of the naked edges uh, has to go offset outwards. And uh, then we can scale it a little bit. And then we just connect the start to the start of this edge and the end to the end of this edge. And then we can have this flaps. Uh, the problem here is if I give this when you give a curve to a B-rep, it's uh, actually going to find the borders like this, okay? If I go to the curve and use the offset curve to here, you can see it's going to give you an error. I don't know why this is an error because these are completely flat and you can check it out by going to planar again. And you can see it's like true. Uh, but to solve this, just to show you that this is going to work for the boundaries, is that you can project them. Uh, whenever you just have this problem, project your curve again to the plane. And I think that's going to solve it. So this is the plane, and then give it to the offset. And you can see that's going to go offset outwards. Uh, the problem arises when we want to, instead of offsetting all the boundaries, uh, I want to offset each edge separately, right? So what I have to do is uh, explode this curve and give it to the offset. Now you can see that some of them are going outwards and some of them are going inwards. And that's a really hard problem to solve because their planes are different. You just have to work with planes and these things. So there are uh, maybe some methods that you can do that faster. But what I have found is uh, after projecting this and offsetting them outwards, uh, I've used this technique that this edge and the offset edge, uh, I've connected the center to the center and made this normal vector and use that for the plane. So let me explain. Uh, first, when we offset the curve, we deconstruct that with a curve explode and flatten. So we have 96 segments, each segment's here. If I bake that, you can see that each of these segments is the offset. Uh, so we have this, uh, segments for the offset of the boundary. Then we explode the main curve, which was this one, and flatten it. So now again, we have also the same amount of edges. And then what I have done is found the centroids, the center of the curve, sorry, uh, the curve, curve middle, and then just connect this with a vector two point. Vector two point connected from this point to this point. Uh, whenever you want to see a vector, you can go to display and vector display, give it to the vector. And for the anchor, we can give this point. So you can see that this is going to give you a vector outwards. I'm going to use that vector to make my plane. So the plane is going to be a completely from scratch vector plane, uh, construct plane. The center is going to be this one. Uh, the X is going to be the direction of this segment. So as you can see here, each of these edges is going to be the X direction of my plane. And the normal direction of Y is going to be the vector I just made here, right? Uh, and when I do that, uh, let me just make this plane a little bit smaller. And I'll just... So you can see that, and that's the plane we need. So we're going to use that plane for the offset curve. The problem we had with offset curve that is we didn't have the XY 
uh, the plane for the offset and I actually tried everything so for example if I give it an XY plane uh, again you can see that some of them are going to go outwards some of them inwards if you just give the same curve to the plane it's not going to solve it because again it's some of them are inwards some of them are outwards you just have to correct the plane so i use this technique you can use other techniques too okay uh, after producing this uh plane and offset curve we can get just turn off these ones okay that is going to be the distance of the flaps uh, or the offset here we have uh, then we can scale them at their centers so it's going to be something like this number between 0 and 1 and then we just give the start and end points uh, curve endpoints from the scaling to the start and end points of these edges we have them here And that's it. You can see that's the start to the end, start to the end, and we will have these edges here. Okay, what you have to do is to just join all of them together. So what I have done is uh, I've used this start and end part, the scaling part, and also this edge to join them together. Remember that you have to have groups of four. Uh, and if it doesn't have a group of four, so some of, the, some of them have different zeros, so you just have to simplify the inputs, uh, the outputs, so you join the, the four together. Okay, after that, we just simply give it a surface. If I bake it, you can see that we have these surfaces here if you want to use it in your project, or just simply give it uh, a curve like this. Or you can use any of these lines I have put here in your projects. And then you can also, for the B-reps, we had them here. Uh, you can find their area centroid and again give it a point list. So that is also the number uh, of these parts. And then you can just glue them together and make this complete mesh. Okay, I hope this example file and tutorial was useful. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel and share with your friends. Uh, so more people can watch it and see you next time. Bye